Hello my darlings, welcome back to the Craft World Studio. My name is Kate, I uh, do a lot of crafty things here at Craft World. I also work with the team on Love Sewing, which is why we're here on the Love Sewing YouTube channel. Um, and I am here today to talk about episode 4 of season 8 of the Great British Sewing Bee. One of all of our favourite shows, brilliant episode as ever. Um, before we get stuck in, a little bit of housekeeping. So Love Sewing Magazine is the UK's best sewing magazine. It's absolutely wonderful, but you don't have to take my word for it. You can go over onto craftworld.com and get a little sneak peek of it. Um, if you like what you see, now is a very, very good time to subscribe because we have some absolutely cracking subscription offers, including getting your hands on this year's Companion Sewing Bee book with all of the official patterns in it. Lots of the patterns that are used in the pattern challenge this year are in the Sewing Bee book. It's written by Juliette Uzor, who is one of the former Sewing Bee winners. Not that we're allowed to have favourites, but she's definitely one of my favourites. <laughs> um, brilliant, brilliant book. So if you want a copy of that, as well as getting Love Sewing to your door every single month, head on over to Craft World. Um, another little bit of housekeeping. We've had to start fresh with this channel, guys. So um, we need your help to get our subscriber numbers back up. Um, we got locked out of our old account, unfortunately. So you would be doing me a huge, huge personal favor if you would hit that subscribe button and also hit the little bell icon so that you get notified when we do any new videos. We're doing a reaction video to every single video. <laughs> We're doing a reaction video to every single episode of Sewing Bee this year, so that's a video every single week. I am also working on a video about my wedding dress. It's my wedding in, as I film this, in two days, so <laughs> I will actually be able to reveal my wedding dress very soon. So if you are interested in seeing a little bit of behind the scenes of me sorting out my wedding dress, then that will be coming soon as well, so make sure you're subscribed, turn on those notifications, and yeah, we can be, we can be uh, sewing besties, or at least, you know, part of the family. <laughs> so without further ado, we are going to crack on to this week's episode of Sewing Bee. I'm trying a slightly different format of video this week, so please, please let me know whether you prefer this style or the styles we've done before. This is the first year that we're doing this. Um, all your feedback is super, super mega useful to us. So please leave that down in the YouTube comments below. Also, like I've said before, sometimes I talk absolute nonsense and I might well be wrong about things. And I love it when you disagree with me. <laughs> so again, please leave those comments down in the YouTube uh, comments box, whether you agree or you disagree. I wanna hear about it. Um, so this week's episode of Sewing Bee, Reduce, Reuse, Recycle Week. I am well into that. Um, I am wearing my charity shop Laura Ashley dress to celebrate and from this you might be able to guess what my favourite garment was this week. Uh, <laughs> I also paid my, uh, I got all of my fun money when I was at uni by cutting up old duvets and sewing them into new things. So this is uh, in my wheelhouse I guess. But those of you who have seen these episodes before, you know I don't like the transformation challenge. So how does that quite add up? Um, for me, I think sustainable sewing, reusing fabrics, all of that is super, super important and fabulous. That's why I'm wearing a secondhand wedding dress. Um, but I don't think the transformation challenge is the best way to showcase uh, recycling and reusing of fabrics. So I am actually excited about this episode because it gives us a chance to see what you can really do with a bit more time, a little bit more care to create something really beautiful from repurposed fabrics. So without further ado, let's get cracking. So first up, let's have a look at the pattern challenge. This week's pattern challenge, if I step over, is a patchwork jacket. This pattern, this exact pattern, paper pattern included, is in this year's Sewing Bee book. So if you want to make one of these, and I think, you know, Juliet's version is pretty damn cute. Um, it's in the Sewing Bee book, which you know you can get for free when you subscribe to Love Sewing. We also, on 
the Craft World website, we've got a pattern for a patchwork denim skirt, which uses some of the, some kind of similar skills and techniques, which is here. And we've also got a feature from Eliza Lex on reworking denim, because we've all been there. You've got a beloved pair of jeans, and they get a hole somewhere, unfortunate. And no, no amount of patching is going to make that into a comfy, wearable pair of jeans again. But then you've got all of this really beautiful, really excellent fabric that you want to do something with. So patchwork pieces are perfect for denim, really, really useful. I also really liked, by the way, that this episode of Sewing Bee touched on the black quilters of uh, particularly the USA. Um, we've written a lot about the G's Bend quilters, fantastic, really fascinating history there. Um, and I'm going to leave a couple of links about that as well, because read up on it, you'll find it so inspiring, so interesting. Um, and it's a part of our creative heritage that we should celebrate a bit more. So let's get cracking. I mean, overall, I think the garments look fantastic. I think uh, Brogan's is so cute. I love the mixture of cherries and strawberries. Um, I mean, it's twee as heck, but I love it. I think that with a little pair of um, jeans, actually it takes it from something that's maybe a bit out there to, you can see Brogan in that. I think she did a cracking job picking her fabric. Um, as the judges pointed out, there was like a couple of teeny tiny errors, you know, where she's either mitered or not mitered a corner, but her stitching is neat as anything. And I think she's done, I think she's done a cracking job. What can I say? I think that's, should we give, should we give her a, a, a four out of five for that? Let's give her a four out of five. Yeah, why not? On to Marnie's, so she's gone for more of like the blue families. A couple of pieces where her patchwork is slightly off. We, what we don't talk about much, and I'm just going to pause here a sec, is the overlap between patchwork and dressmaking. They're, to, to a lot of us, those are different crafts. You either do dressmaking or you do patchwork. There's sometimes there's not much of a crossover a lot of the time for people. But I think doing some quilting and patchwork projects, if you are a dressmaker, is going to make you a better dressmaker because it teaches you precision, it teaches you patience. <laughs> um, so I wholeheartedly recommend, if you've never done any patchwork, try it out, give it a little go. It's, it's um, yeah, I think you'll, you'll enjoy it more than you think you will. Even just something like this that's just square patches, um, it can be a lot of fun to give it a go. So if you've not tried patchwork before, give it a shot. So let's get back to Armani. Armani, mm. um, Yeah, so her edges are, are, are neat. The judges skipped over her a little bit, didn't they? It wasn't very much. I think she did a decent job. What should we say, three and a half? Nice, yeah. Christian, are you used yet to how much I love Christian? I think this is beautiful. Like the mirroring here is just, oh, that, that, oh, yes, that, that, that makes me very, very happy. I think it's beautiful. Um, the little introduction of it's not just yellow, there's little pops of color in those floral blocks. Um, yeah, I think he's done a cracking job on this. Um, some of his corners aren't completely there. Some of his, um, a lot of his joints are very, very neat. Um, his quilting is lovely and even from what I can see. Yeah, yeah, that's a solid, what, like four and a half? It's not complete perfection. I think judges picked up on a couple of things, but it's pretty good. Um, Angela, yeah, so a couple of her lines were just completely off. But if you've not done patchwork before, this is a learning curve. Um, it's not gonna stop you wearing the thing. You know what I mean? It's one of those things where as a crafter, you see your own mistakes, you see details, but I think it's still, I think broadly speaking, this week's pattern challenge has been a good one. Um, again, she's not mitered her corners here, so maybe maybe hers is more of a three. Do we think, is that fair? Yeah, let's, let's, let's give Angela a, a three out of five. 
Deborah's again very pretty. I quite like that she's gone for a blue contrast um, binding around the edge there, and she's fussy cut that she's fussy cut that little bunny out of that patchwork fabric. It's just super super cute. She's taken her time with a lot of things, which has possibly meant that she's had to rush towards the end. But overall, decent, I think. Really nice. What, what, what should we say? Four? We'll give her a four? I don't think there's any major disasters so far. Annie. Oh. Annie is so underrated in this competition. This is absolutely cracking. I love her choice of fabrics. Using the black and white in there. I love black, white and red as a, as a colour combo. I've got a lot of black, white and red dresses. Um, yeah, I love it. So her corners aren't perfectly mitered. There's a little bit here and there, but the style of it, that puts it straight to a four for me. <laughs> Jill's is cute. I like she's done something different with the pattern placement of doing the same fabrics all the way down the front. Interesting idea. It kind of takes away from the patchwork element to me, but it's, it's not bad. Her corners are mostly fine. Some of them are a bit iffy. Um, I feel like this week we're just nitpicking really. Um, I, I think it was a solid four. Man Yi, they are picking at this, but from where I stand, it looks really pretty. Her colour choice is lovely. Um, the corners are rounded rather than mitered. Um, that's a style choice. She could have deliberately gone for rounded corners. Okay, something a bit messy. But look, I will die on the hill that Man Yi is the best. Um, Steve, I think it's, it's decent. He's, God bless him, it's not finished. But this is a very difficult pattern challenge. This pattern challenge has done what the pattern challenge should do, which is stretch the sewists. Because if you give them all something that's too easy, you're gonna give them all a five out of five and you've, you're no way closer to being able to rank them at the end of the day. So, yeah, Steve, but the amount that's gone into it, I don't want to give him too low a score, but maybe, maybe it's a two and a half, three? What do we think? Round about there? Um, so yeah, great pattern challenge I thought this week, and very happy to see a little bit of uh, patchwork and particularly to see that little history feature. I have missed the history features in Sewing Bee. I always enjoy them. I'd like some of the technique -y features to come back a little bit as well, but yeah, the history feature I, I, I thought was definitely worth a watch. So if you haven't seen this episode of Sewing Bee, go away now, watch that history feature um, and then come back and we'll rank the rest of it. <laughs> And we are on to the transformation challenge. I'm just gonna witter in general here. I don't even wanna score these because I thought they were all much of a muchness, to be honest. I wasn't quite sure what the judges were basing their scoring on or what they were looking for, which I think is, I think that's where my problem is coming in with the, with the transformation challenge. I don't know what the judges are looking for. I don't know if they're looking for a dramatic transformation or to be able to still see the, the roots of what the garment is. Um, I didn't see the point in this transformation. When are you ever gonna wanna take two coats and make one coat? Oh, co coats don't get so destroyed that you need to replace half of them. You can patch them up, but <sighs> Brogan's was was pretty, it was cute. Christian's was, yeah, looked wearable. I don't think there was any... There's not time for amazing sewing in 90 minutes. There just isn't. To come up with an idea, execute it, do it well. I don't know how the judges ranked this. I don't know how they scored it. Marnie with a little S on the back, cute, fine, nice, whatever. <sighs> Am I? Is it just me? And then Patrick's complaining that it doesn't fit the mannequin. It's like, well, but that, her, her jacket was smaller than the others to start with then. Like, <sighs> are they looking for a dramatic transformation? Are they looking for creativity? Are they looking to... 
acknowledge the origins of the garment. All the garments they got were wildly different. How do you com compare them together? Can we just skip this transformation challenge, guys? I feel like I'm just repeating myself every week. Except for Manny. Manny's cute coat was really cute. But Manny started with two cute coats. She did a good job of splicing them together. But that's not a transformation. That's a splicing two things. I don't think it tests dress making skills. That's it. Fundamentally, I don't think this tests dress making skills. I'm going to stop ranking this until it comes down to, you know, if I have to choose between Man Yi and Annie on something, I might have to look at the transformation challenge. But that's, that's it. Or Broken. I don't have favourites, but I do have favourites, and they're Man Yi, Annie, and Broken. And Christian. And Jill. And... No, I... We need to narrow it down further, don't we? We're skipping the transformation challenge. Right. Let's get to the fun bit. The actual made to measure. This is so up my alley, I can't possibly tell you. I am a huge advocate of using duvets for sewing fabric. I've done it my whole life. Um, a well-worn duvet, no matter what the original fabric is, whether it was pure cotton, as as no one or poly cotton blend, whatever, it gets like a softness and a drape to it. Something that's been used and washed, and yeah, I, I think actually working with duvet fabric is a lot of fun. You get great, great, great drape from it, you get movement, and the things that can be tricky are entirely sort of surmountable. So it's things like the scale of the print can sometimes be a bit, um, a bit of a challenge to work with, but we see some great examples of how you can get over that here. Um, that's about it. Sometimes you can find an unexpected hole in places, but your reclaiming fabric is extremely cheap and you're stopping something from going into landfill at the end of the day. Um, I, like I said, all my way through uni, the way that I made money <laughs> to pay for myself to go down and see my other half in Coventry or to go chasing bands around the country was I would spend a couple of hours every Sunday sewing skirts made from old duvet covers and listing them on eBay. <laughs> um, and it was fun. It was a, it's, it was a creative challenge. Um, it got me very confident with my sewing machine and it felt a bit more low stakes because I hadn't spent a lot of money on the fabric so I could get a bit more experimental. There's always plenty to work with. Um, a full size double duvet is more than enough for a dress. Um, you get some great prints. I used to use a lot of old kids duvet covers. My favourite was Rainbow Bright. My Little Pony, um, Care Bears, I used to get like Postman Pat, um, I have the best time with it and I will always enjoy working with duvets. I think this is a great challenge because you get enough fabric to really go for it with a maxi dress. Um, a maxi dress is a broad enough challenge that everyone can put their own stamp on it. If you want some maxi dress patterns by the way guys hop on over to Craftwell, we've got some freebies. <laughs> um, our most popular one is a digital version of the Simple Sew Amelia dress with a maxi skirt hack. Um, so the paper version of Amelia is um, sort of a knee length, midi length. We've, we took it down to a maxi. It's got shearing around the middle, so it's lovely and comfy. It's got like floaty sleeves, beautiful. And it is our most downloaded pattern. So go have at it, it's a lovely pattern. You can make it from a duvet. I wanna see your makes, I challenge you. Um, it's free, what's your excuse? You've got a duvet cover in the cupboard you're not using. Go on, go on, get at it. <laughs> I would, but I've got a wedding this weekend. So I'm excusing myself. <laughs> uh, so let's, should we actually get on to me having some opinions right now? Because I loved this challenge, spoiler alert. 
I think everyone did a good job. I don't envy the judges for having to make a decision out of this lot. I think there's places where I can nitpick, but obviously I'm only seeing what's what's been edited into the finished show. So I don't know if I'm right or not. I'm not getting close up details, but let me stop my waffling and let's look at some dresses, all right? <laughs> That's what we're all here for, right? Maxi dress is just oh it's delightful isn't it just a, a, having a good waft I thought Jill's was lovely really sweet I love the diagonal lines of it um, I'm not sure if it maybe could have done with being more fitted around here it looks it's that thing with maxi dress you want it to be loose and floaty but I think it might have been a little bit more flattering if it was more fitted under the bust but that's that's just my taste I, I always like things fitted at the very high waist not quite an empire line but like this this length um yeah should we give her an eight we'll give her an eight it's nice it's nice let's give her an eight deborah we are starting to see deborah's personal style here this has a very similar feel i think to her first uh made to measure challenge I agreed with the judges actually about the belt not being necessary. I liked the layering to it. Again, this is something that you will find with duvet covers is that they can get a little bit thin, but usually the front and the back are designed to coordinate and match. So you can just layer them up and it's fine. And you're not gonna see any undies underneath. <laughs> I love the orange piping as well. I think that's really pretty. Yeah, are we gonna give, uh, should we give Deborah a nine? Let's do it. Christian, absolutely cracking. Now, what I will say is this is quite a simple pattern that Christian's gone for, but I love the story of his duvet cover and his parents and all that kind of thing, but this is a relatively simple shape to fit, I will say. It's a little bit too long. It, again, I could do with it. Is this just me that wants it to be fitted around here? Let's give it an eight. Marnie, ah, cracking. I loved her designer inspiration. I think her interpretation of it was beautiful. I love that she dyed her own contrast strip here. The judges again are saying that the waist tie is unnecessary. This is too long. The ju judges didn't mention that this is too long. This is a long way too long. <laughs> They're also saying it's bagging here, which you probably wouldn't notice if the waist was just like maybe a back tie rather than around the waist. Should we say an eight and a half? Yeah, let's say an eight and a half. Uh, on to Annie. Are you all sick of me telling you how much I love Annie yet? Because I love Annie. I think this is just wonderful. It's just, can you see a flaw? There is no flaw. It's just, everything is bang on. The, the judge says, this is in the city, my husband went, don't care, don't care, don't care, love it, perfect, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, I need 10. She put crochet into it, little waist tie back here. Oh, it's so 70s, I love it. Now, <laughs> how do we think I'm going to rate Brogan's? We're giving it a 10, we're giving it a 10, I'm taking no questions at this time. It's perfect, it's wonderful, it's magical, it's everything, it is delightful. I need it. it <sighs> My brain is breaking from how much I love this dress. Maybe I don't need to get married this weekend. Maybe I can just make a dress. They're nitpicking about the blooming evenness of the ruffles. I don't care. Look at that dress. It's perfect. Everything about it is perfect. Shh, shh, shh. Judges, shh. It's perfect. It's 10. Moving on to Angela. Angela's is pretty, it's nice. I don't love the fit of this. I think the bodice is too long on it. I think the bodice is too long by about that much. When I'm looking at it, I want that, it's like the waistline sitting here-ish when it wants to sit like there. She's missing a button as well. But it's a very nice dress, it's well executed. Nice choice of duvet fabric. Yeah, what, what, an eight? What do you reckon, an eight? Yeah. Yeah, we'll call it an eight. Oh, also too long. Hmm. Man, 
ye is perfect, everything she does is wonderful. Again, the judges are nitpicking, I don't care, it's a 10. I am over being objective at this point. Don't care. Just like, oh, it needed an extra ruffle, it feels on toes. You only say that because you know she was going to put an extra ruffle on it. Everything that's there looks fantastic, doesn't it? You saw someone walking down the road in that dress, you go, oof. It's, it's cracking. Ten. Sorry, judges. Steve's dress I thought was lovely. A lot. So this is a great example of if you have um, a large scale print, which you'll often find on a duvet cover, this is a great way to deal with it. Put it down the bottom. Um, and yeah, often you'll find that the pillowcases have got a smaller scale print or the back has got a smaller scale print or something like that. It's not perfect. Again, I don't think it's... Why, why, I feel like it's only me that wants things this fitted under the bust. Maybe I need to reassess my life and my choices because I'm looking at that thinking it's too loose, but the judges didn't say anything about that. Um, like the zip is slightly off, the gathering is slightly off, maybe this one is more of a seven because it's not as difficult as some of the others, like Mandy took on a real challenge, um, Brogan took on a real challenge, you know what I mean, those, both of those dresses had a lot of elements to them to play around with, this is a simpler one, so should we say seven, um, yeah, do you think I've been fair, so let's, let's, let's recap. Okay, so I haven't added anything up this week because it was so tight. Everyone did an absolutely cracking job. And let's be honest, the only person who very, very slightly fell short of the mark here and there was Steve. And sadly, he's the sewist to leave the sewing room this week. But still a fantastic sewist. He's Blooming good at what he does. Really, really excellent. Um, always a shame to see someone go home, but that's how the game is played. Um, yeah, fantastic week. I think this week is a great example of why I don't like the transformation challenge, because you look at the pattern challenge, you look at the made to measure, you look at how good all of those garments were, and <laughs> nothing in a transformation challenge has ever been that good. And if all you ever see of recycled dressmaking is the transformation challenge, you're not seeing these maxi dresses, these patchwork jackets, then what you're going to think of recycled dressmaking is that it's second rate, that it's not wearable, that it's shoddy and messy. Whereas actually, the the made to measure challenge especially proves how good recycled sewing can be and sustainable sewing. Um, so yeah, I really hope this episode has inspired you to think about sustainability with your sewing and your crafting. Um, we've got a couple of really useful articles on Craftworld, which um, you can read if you just type in sustainable sewing, they'll come up and we will see you again next week so if you want to see next week's installment make sure you're subscribed make sure you turn on the bell icon make sure you sign up for your free craft world account and get your weekly sewing bee newsletter and i will see you again next time